everybody, Mark Spectre Comics, and I'm back. This time, I ended up getting a small stack of books from a local comic convention over the weekend. If you want to see what books I picked up, stay tuned for that intro. All right, so welcome back. Like I said, Ended up going to a local Comic Con over the weekend, um, picked up a small stack of books, and uh, can't wait to show to you guys what I picked up. But before I do, feel free to subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up, and that bell notification so that when I do put out some content, you get it in a timely fashion. Um, it's been about like three weeks or so since my last video, and you know, part of it is, you know, I'm not in my normal location, I'm working, you know, travel assignment. So I'm not really hunting as frequently as I used to when I was back home. Um, that being said, I did have some time to go to this convention over the weekend, a small Comic Con. It was called Rocky Mountain Comic Con uh, here in Denver. And, uh, there was a you know some decent amount of vendors there. It was in a hotel, so it's not like your traditional big comic con. I call it more of like a comic show than anything else. It was a two day show, Saturday, Sunday. Went on Saturday. Um, ended up going in the afternoon after I woke up from my uh, night shift, and I figured you know have a couple of hours. So um, brought my wife and son to the convention and uh, had a decent time. Um, there was a couple of artists there that uh, I wanted to see. There was Mike Barron there. He's um, most notably, uh, at least for me, you know, from the Flash Volume 2 series. But I didn't see him there, so it was unfortunate because I wanted to get a book signed by him. But uh, I didn't get to meet him, so that sucks. But um, I did do some hunting. There was about, I don't know, 10 to 15 vendors there and um, some artists and whatnot. So I ended up looking around. I usually do when I go to a convention, I swoop around the whole convention first to see what you know they have. And then I actually started doing hunting just to have a little mindset of what books I'm eyeing and just to see what kind of variety is there. So unfortunately, I did not take any footage. I didn't think it was worth taking footage to be honest. It wasn't that big of a convention. Um, they did pack it in pretty tightly considering it was in a hotel like you know conference room but um, had a good time so uh, I was primarily looking just for I don't know maybe like five six books at most because I don't have the space to like kind of put these books anywhere so any books I do acquire I have to be mindful because I want to just like buy them and send them off the grading because I know I'm not going to be in my current location for a long time. So given that leeway, I can send the books off. And then um, when I get back, I can unbox those books. Because I can't take the books with me to wherever I go next, you know. So it's not like I'm buying like I used to do it when I'm back home. Because I have space. Here I don't have any space. So like I said, didn't take any footage. But um, I'm going to show you the books I did get. Ended up getting... I'll start with the uh, newest book first, and what I mean new, I mean I ended up getting a, <laughs> my newest book was earliest book of, is Silver Age. So um, I'll start with the uh, Silver Age books first, well the Silver Age book, and then the uh, rest are Golden Age books. And um, I'll tell you a little bit about the books, um, the vendor I got them from, if there's any significance, what I paid for it grade and, and, and any notes that may be with that book just so because the first book you're going to be familiar with the rest of them they're kind of obscure kind of scarce so you may or may not know them depending on if you collect on that error or not so um first book i'm going to talk about is is you know is a spec book so you're going to know this book right away when you see it and um this is amazing spider-man issue number 51 and uh, if you're not familiar with this book, it is the second appearance of Kingpin. 
and uh, this is also the first cover appearance of Kingpin. Um, classic cover done by John Romita. Um, didn't I, I forget? Did I see a fifty? I I might have seen a fifty there. Um, I don't remember what they were asking for it, but um, I saw this one. This was the only book I got from this one vendor. He had some pretty good books there, some some slabs, some five dollar books, so forth. Um, I was trying to keep my budget on a limit. I didn't want to spend more than two fifty when I was at a con, and that's kind of like one of the tips I always you know try to give is have a game plan of how much you want to spend when you go to a convention because if you don't, you, it can easily go overboard. And you can easily spend hundreds, if not thousands, out of convention. So um, I stuck to a $250 limit, and I didn't even spend that. I didn't even spend $200. So um, this book right here, I don't know. This is, you know, there's some obviously wear on this book. It's an old book, um, but it's in decent condition. I'd probably say... Uh, I don't know, four, four, five, five, oh, if I'm lucky, but I'm going to say conservatively a four, oh, and I'm going to give you my grades too, because this is going to be my, my convention pickups and my submission, you know, haul for, for, um, CGC. So, um, I'm going to estimate this is going to be a four, oh, I am going to send this off for pressing and cleaning because it, you could tell a little bit there. It could probably be cleaned up a little bit on uh, Kingpin's uh, coat there. So I ended up paying. The guy was asking fifty bucks for it. I paid forty-five, and, and you know, doesn't hurt to negotiate with these with these uh, vendors. So um, I didn't bring any cash. He said I can, you know, forty bucks cash, but I didn't have any cash, so I paid forty-five bucks. So I'm happy with that. And I always tell you what I pay. You know, I, I keep it transparent. You know, there's really no reason not to. You know, but um, because it, I, I like to show you what deals there are out there to be made. So uh, especially with you know a book that's heavy spec like this character to be in the MCU. Um, next book. So like I said that was the only Silver Age book I picked up. The rest, the other four books, I picked up five books total at the convention are going to be Golden Age. And um, I'm going to start with a cool cover first. I guess, um, I don't know if you could call this pre-code horror, but it looks kind of scary-ish to me. But first book is going to be Out of the Night, issue number 11. And this is from, let me see if I can get away from the glare a little bit. So I don't know if you want to call this pre-code horror, I guess so. And um, this is also an electrocution cover. As you can see, the uh, little military uh, soldier there is getting electrocuted by this really tall electro looking character. <laughs> um, this is pre-electro, obviously this is golden age. Um, this came out in, this was, this came out bi-monthly. This was um, October, November of 1953 going to read you some notes on this book. Um, this came out by a publisher named American Comics Groups. And uh, this is actually a 17-issue run. Um, what else? There's some other notes on here. So this is not a high grade by any means. There's, you know, water stains on here, um, even on the uh, Electro character there. It is waterlogged a little bit. It will benefit from a press because there is some waviness to the book here on the side because it is, you know, waterlogged, but it had not been pressed. Um, the person, the vendor actually graded this VG fine, uh, but then also on the back graded it good minus. So I'm not really sure. Um, I'm going to say conservatively, it is probably a 2.0 in this current condition. And um, with off white to white, but off white pages, I, I opened up this book as well and uh, make sure that you know all the pages were there. The book is attached, and um, I paid twenty five bucks for it. There, this is a fairly scarce book. 
um, house scares, I don't know. But inside there are four stories. And the first story actually is called The Electric Spirit, uh, which focuses on this character here. And uh, it is a Ken Bald cover. And there's only nine on the census. So uh, not many. In a lot of these books, I did a little bit of research before buying them. You know, they all had under, I think, 30 on the census, minus the uh, ASM 51. So that was the first book, and um, this was a different vendor. I bought these three books total that I'm going to show you for 75 bucks, so 25 bucks a piece. Um, the next book is going to be a really cool cover. This one's called Date with Danger. So this is um, Date with Danger, issue number six. There you go. Um, there is some writing here. It almost looks like, I don't know, they wrote the date on it. It says 1224. Maybe that's when they purchased it. Who knows? Uh, it doesn't say the year. But um, really cool. You could tell this is Cold War because um, this guy right here is wearing you know, a Cold War hat, the Soviet hat, the Red Star. Um, it says, get your passport to death. And it looks like uh, she's either trying to run off the boat and about to go in the water, or she's going to try to catch that ladder there. <laughs> so it's pretty funny. And uh, you see this other soldier up here shooting machine gun into the boat, or at the boat, sorry. Um, this is actually interesting because this series by um, Standard Comics, up here, Standard Comics, was um, also published bi-monthly, but was only two issues. And um, this was, you know, the two issues being the first issue was issue number five. This is issue number six. So this is actually the final issue in the run. And I like collecting last issues and runs. Um, you know, it's just me personally. I tend to find out that they're lower printed, but in this case, there was only two issues. <laughs> For whatever reason, if anybody knows why, I don't know why this was only two issues. But um, the first issue was more on the pre-code horror side, and this is more war-related. So um, really nice cover. I couldn't pass this up for 25 bucks. Um, this was actually graded at VG, so uh, 4.0. And um, I'd say it's, yeah, probably right around that grade as well. Um, I will send this out for pressing as well. I don't think it can be cleaned. It looks fairly clean. But um, I'd say this is probably a 4 out. A good grading by the, the vendor. Um, they also wrote down, so this is a fairly scarce book. There's only less than 200 known to exist, according to the um, vendor's notes. And there's also an a, a, you know atom, atom bomb panel in there as well. So um, atomic bomb panel, I, which I looked inside, it was actually pretty cool. Um, other notes about this book, it was it's a John Salardo cover, and um, there's only six on the census on the CGC census, and believe it or not, there was eight stories in here: uh, Passport to Death, Kempe Tai, The Ali Baba Jar, Red Spy, The Red, uh, The Saga of Red Erickson, Barrier to Freedom, Trifles Mean Death. The final gamble, all on this one book. Can you imagine all that, all these stories in one book? Can't imagine that today in these new comics, but uh, they managed to put that many stories in here. And it was actually some of them were pretty good. I was able to, you know, read a couple, couple of them. So it was very interesting. So um, that was the uh, second book. Um, the third book I got from this vendor, and this vendor was actually somewhat local to the convention. They were in based out of Lakewood, uh, Colorado. And uh, this book, I picked it up because it was just a cool cover. Um, I like these somewhat Christmas-themed uh, covers, especially in the Golden Age. And when I saw it there, and it was also a first appearance, I had to pick it up. And uh, the uh, book in question was Dell, uh, Four Color, Volume 2, issue number 359. 
and uh, this is on Frosty the Snowman, and this is actually Frosty the Snowman's first appearance in comics. Um, great cover. I Do I have notes on who wrote this cover? Uh, I do not have any notes on who did the cover, but um, like I said, it is the first appearance of Frosty the Snowman in comics. There is a Santa Claus appearance in there. And there's a pretty funny story of uh, evil Santa, uh, not evil, evil snowman in here. Evil, uh, so the one of the first stories in here talks about a contest of who, um, which kid, you know, created the best um, snowman. And uh, one of the kids created an evil snowman. <laughs> it was a pretty funny story. Um, if you hadn't, you know, read this issue before. Um, but um, he had this graded at a BG plus or a 4.5. Um, there is, I opened it up, and on the side there is some pressable defects, so I could probably get a 5.0. Um, like I said, it only cost me 25 bucks. He was charging 30. I got him down to 25. And uh, there is a small stain on the back cover. But um, he wrote down less than 2,000 known copies that exist. So, um, not common, not uncommon, but you know, probably on the uncommon side but um, not scarce by any means. And um, like I said, there's only seven on the census. Not many people graded this book, but I'm gonna send this off for grading anyways, because I only spent 25 bucks. So well worth it in my opinion. Um, but you guys can obviously let me know in the comments what you guys think about these books. If they were, you know, great deal, um, if they were meh or uh, really cool. And uh, the last book was from a different vendor. Um, he had amazing golden age books, you know, some really nice like Human Torch from the early 40s, some nice LB Cole covers. And I did see a really cool LB Cole call, I think it was Mystery Shock Tales or something like that. But it was like 1400 bucks. And I was like, love to buy it because I love LB Cole covers, but I was, you know, at a $250 budget, so <laughs> I needed to stick to that budget. Um, but I was digging through the back issue Golden Age section, and I saw a book there that I was, like, just blown away that it was even there. And, uh, you know, there's a really famous book in the, gold, in the Golden Age, Pre-Code Horror, that's probably the most famous skull cover of all time. I'll put the picture up in there. But this book actually came right after that issue. And uh, great pre-code horror cover. And uh, it is Punch Comics issue number 13. And you're looking at it, it's like, Dave, this book's in rough shape. <laughs> and yes, it is. Um, so I'll tell you, the, the book is, I talked to the uh, vendor. I was like, is this book complete? And I was like, yeah, no resto. I was like, no resto. Book is detached, and it's obviously in really rough condition. Um, so look at it a little bit closer so you can see there's a ton of chipping at the top, some pieces missing, pieces there on the bottom, and here, and here. Uh, you can see part of the uh, shoe is missing as well book is in brittle condition um you know as you can see there it is detached um some of it is still attached here on the top staple but at the bottom is completely detached um but i only paid 30 bucks for it tried to talk him down to 15 he was like no i can't this book is super hard to find um it is a great, if you look at this cover, amazing cover. You can see this big skeleton hand dropping her right into her grave. <laughs> and uh, this other guy here trying to shoot at the skeleton, which <laughs> it's to no avail. But uh, <laughs> this is a, an amazing book. It doesn't obviously go for as much as Punch Comics 12, but it is still a very desirable pre-code horror book. Um, I'll tell you some notes about this book. Let's see. Came out in April of 1945 by uh, Chesler Comics. It is a 23 issue series. Um, 
well, I guess it is a Gus Gus Ricca cover, and uh, I'm probably in the condition that it's in. I'm probably going to say it's 0.5, um, 1 0 if I'm lucky. I'm probably going to say conservatively it's a 0.5. Um, but the book is complete, and that's all I care about. It was only 30 bucks, so I can't pass that up. Um, on the census, census wise, there's only 21 on the census. Um, but it's not like a book that you see often, you know, I was looking on eBay and there was like three O copies and people were asking like $1,200. So, uh, so for me to get my, this copy for 30 bucks, I, I thought it was a no brainer and it's probably like one of those books I'll probably never see again in the wild. So I was happy to pick this up. So, um, that's it. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you do, please hit that thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below uh, what you thought about the books. My, um, you know, what you thought was it cool books? Eh, um, something you already have in the collection. If you do, that's awesome. Um, I'm gonna send these all out for grading and including my uh, Immortal Hulk uh, 50, one and 100 copy as well. So I'm gonna have six books total going off to CGC. I'm going to send it off, for, um, three of those books off for, for pressing before uh, they get graded. And uh, hopefully they come back sometime, I don't know, early next year. So uh, I'll be happy to see what those come back when they do. So um, hopefully you guys enjoy that. If not, there's nothing I can do for you. <laughs> so until next time, Mark Spectre Comics, out.